All right, Jeremy Veldman with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome to another edition of Telescope Tips. Now tonight, I'm gonna go over the telescope that I use to look at the moon. You can see the moon behind me. It's a couple nights away from being full. So this is actually a great night to look at the moon. And for that, I use my smaller telescope, not the big dob that I showed you in a previous episode. So I'm gonna go, uh, go through setting up my three and a half inch ETX on a go-to mount for looking at the moon. And you can see I got the stand right here already set up. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that first of all, it's pointing due north because I wanna get the scope in the home position so that I can use the go-to controller to find things easier. So I've got the tripod set up and what I'm gonna do is use a simple level to make sure that it's level on both sides. And uh, you can see right there it is. If I need to adjust the legs a little bit, then I go ahead and do that, as well as over here. Um, but for the most part, it's looking pretty good. So the stand is level. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top of the telescope and screw it onto this mount right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm actually grabbing the telescope now and I'm going to put it on the mount. Now on the bottom of the mount I'm going to look for the high latitude leg and that's going to go in the very back of the scope. So I'm going to go ahead and just line those two screws up right here. That looks pretty good. So I'm screwing it in now. Number one That one's nice and tight. Always feels good to get that first one in place. And now the second one right here. It's gonna take just a minute here. There you go. All right. Just adjust it just a little bit. So that's it. Now I literally have most of my, basically the telescope now is assembled. So you can see it's on the, on the tripod. Now what I need to do is get the telescope in the home position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen it up on the side here and get it as horizontal as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna release the clutch on the telescope here and I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise from due north. So I'm facing due north right now and I'm gonna rotate the, the telescope counterclockwise until it stops and then I'm going to move it until the arm is literally right over top of the control panel which is right here. Now I need to make sure that it's facing due north and in order to do that I'm going to use a compass and iPhones have a you know fairly decent compass in order to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my compass up now and let it adjust for a second, get it to point due north. And uh, it's looking pretty good right there, bang. So then I'm just gonna, once I got it facing due north, I'm gonna go ahead and just lock it in place. Double check here just a second, make sure it's facing due north. Always takes just a second. And right there. Close enough. All right. So then I'm gonna take my level again, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the telescope arm is level. And it's about right there. Perfect. So there you go. Now my telescope ETX is set up in the home position. Now I'm going to take my controller and that's this right here. It's, it's the, uh, the electronic controller and I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the side right there and there's Velcro on the side so it just sticks, sticks right there pretty easily. I'll go ahead and take the, uh, the cover off the front of my telescope 
can see I'm doing that right now. And then I'm gonna put my eyepiece in place. Now, we'll cover eyepieces in more detail in a future episode, but in order to look at the moon, I need a low power, wide field of view eyepiece. And Antores makes a pretty good one. This was recommended to me. It's an Antores 31 millimeter W70 series. Costs about hundred bucks and it is a two inch eyepiece. And of course my eyepiece holder is an inch and a quarter. So I need an adapter that goes from an inch and a quarter to two inches in order to fit the eyepiece in there. Low power, the, um, basically the way eyepieces work is the higher the number, the lower the power, and low power means wider field of view. So 31 millimeter is actually a pretty good wide field of view eyepiece. You know, if we were at 20 millimeters or certainly like five or 10 millimeters, that'd be too low. And uh, we wouldn't be able to get the whole moon into the eyepiece. So I need a wider field of view. Now, I do use a 10 and a five millimeter occasionally to zoom in on craters on the moon. And that can be pretty cool too. But anyway, so I'm just gonna take the eyepiece, put it in the adapter, and it's gotta screw it loose here so that it fits in there. Pretty simple. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into the eyepiece holder right here. And it's gonna fit right in there. Screw it into place. Now the last thing is I need to get power to my telescope and in order to do that I use a battery pack. It's portable. I charge it before I go to any observing session and it's got a slot in here for connecting power to the telescope. You can get one of these at Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart for you know very affordable. They're not very expensive. So I just take this and put this underneath the telescope and then I take my power supply, the cord right here and we go ahead and plug it into the battery pack. And then I'm just gonna plug power now into the side of the telescope. And then I'm gonna turn it on. Now my controller beeps and it's initializing. So now I gotta go through the setup procedure to get this set. Now it's warning me about looking at the sun I'm going to go ahead and ignore that and just press enter. Actually, I'm going to press the number five. And then I'm going to press enter. Now I'm going to enter the date. And today is April 27. So 04, go up to the month of April Oop, 27. Twenty-seven. So now I got April 27, then I got to get the time, 8 o'clock p.m., enter. Daylight savings, yes, we are past daylight savings. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. Now I'm gonna choose, I gotta get the telescope aligned. So I'm gonna choose the one star method for alignment. Two star is better, but I'm gonna choose the one star method. I'm gonna press enter. Alt azimuth, it's an on and alt azimuth mount, so I'm good there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press enter, and I'm gonna choose my star. I always choose Dubé, typically, if it's out. That's at the tip of the, of the bowl of the Big Dipper, the star Dubé, D-U-B-H-E. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that star, press enter, and you can see that the telescope now is slewing to find the star Dubé. Now the North Star is about right there, which means the dipper tonight is gonna to be somewhere over there. So I know intuitively that my telescope is finding it. And when it does, it's just gonna go ahead and beep. Now what this does is it basically aligns the scope to a star so that it can track. The nice thing about a telescope like this is the tracking feature, which is great when we're looking at the moon, that way I don't have to keep moving the telescope around when I have it in, in view. That's what I do with my Dobsonian. It doesn't have any kind of tracking on it. So if I find an object, it's great, but it's not gonna stay in the field of view very long. So I have to keep moving the Dob, the Dobsonian telescope in order to find things. I don't have to do that with my ETS. 
So it says align successful. Now, on a go-to um, controller, you could just punch the moon in and it would find it for you. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume that we don't have that capability and I'm gonna try and find the moon manually to kind of show you how we do that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, actually gonna select nine, enter, and uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and, and slew it manually and then see if I can find it. So you can see now I'm actually moving the controller. I'm moving the telescope now into alignment with the moon. The moon is right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and eyeball this thing and see if I can go ahead and find the moon with this telescope. So to do this requires a little bit of trial and error. But if you do this right, I'm gonna use the viewfinder also, which means I gotta take the cap off the viewfinder. Because if I get it in there, I can, I can, I know I'm pretty close. I can use the viewfinder to find the moon. You can see that, you know, finding the moon should be easy, but it's not necessarily, it's not as easy as it looks. So, but I've, I've had a little bit of experience with this. If I just look underneath and go down, now I should be getting close here. You can see we got some twilight skies here. So I don't have completely dark skies. Now I'm on nine now, which is the maximum speed. But if I need to adjust the speed, I can do that by pressing the number six and I get a little closer. And I kind of look in the eyepiece and see when I can, when the light of the moon starts to get a little closer, then I know I'm, I'm actually honing in on the moon and getting actually, getting, getting closer. So I should be getting close now. I'm gonna press six, enter, and I'm just gonna do it slow. All right, I know I'm real close now because I can see some of the clouds. I can see the light coming in. So you can see I'm just eyeballing the moon, literally just kind of, and now I know I'm real close. Okay, so now the moon is in focus. There it is, pops into view. And I use the, uh, the knob right here on the right to go ahead and and this is my view this is my uh, fine tuning so this is my um, you know my adjustment so I use this to clear it to clear it up and there it is now I can see the moon fantastic right in the eyepiece full view, field of view I wish I could show you this guys in for the purposes of this video but you just gotta kind of take my word for it the moon looks absolutely spectacular in the eyepiece full uh, full shot of the moon I can see Crater Copernicus, I can see Crater Tycho on the lower left, I can see several of the seas and the Maria and the mountain features, and then also on the limb of the moon is really spectacular also. So I now have found the moon manually in my three and a half inch ETX, the smaller scope that I use. And again, this is the scope that I use primarily for the moon, the sun, and also planetary, you know, planets. This is a good scope for that. So, on a night like tonight, you know, it's not a good night for dark skies because you've got a bright moon. So we're not going to look for galaxies and star clusters and things like that. But if you're at home and you've got a nice night like tonight, you can look at the moon. And it's in this telescope and it's there. And I've got, the, got it on a go-to mount and I've got it, you know, got power to my telescope. So literally, I'm talking while I'm shooting this video, I can look in the eyepiece and the moon is still right there in plain field of view. So that's the advantage of a telescope like this. Um, it's not only portable and small, but it also has tracking to allow you to find an object, align it, 
and then it'll stay in the field of view. I can, you know, it'll basically stay there all night as long as there's power to the telescope. So that's it. Um, spectacular night to be looking at the moon. Getting dark now. I don't even know if you guys can see me anymore, but we've got a really bright moon behind me and a beautiful spring night. These are the kinds of nights that we live for as amateur astronomers. Again, guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of the month at Christian Brothers University, Assessi Hall, room 155. Meetings start at 8 o'clock p.m. And we also conduct two dark sky observing sessions every month, if the weather's clear, in Northwest Mississippi. If you'd like to learn more, visit our website, memphisastro.org. And if you like this video, as well as other videos in this series, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Memphis Astron Society. For Jeremy Veldman, hope you enjoyed this episode of Telescope Tips, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.